there's a lot of commotion about interest rates potentially being lowered by the Federal Reserve in the U.S. And the media is super excited that potentially interest rates could go down. And on this podcast, the Investing Mastermind podcast you're listening to, we'll explain all that. I'm Michelle Markey. And I'm Sina Lundholt. And part of what's going on is the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell recently announced at a Jackson Hole meeting that interest rates are now time to start coming down because based on labor market conditions, they're noticing that even though we're at a pretty low unemployment rate, they're seeing a slowdown in hiring and there's increased supply of workers available who want a job, but there might not be as much work available unlike in the past few years when there was a frenzy of hiring. So that's caused unemployment to go up. And they now think that if the labor market is getting tighter and less people have jobs and less people have money coming in, that how can they possibly get, say, housing with higher interest rates, like if they're trying to get a mortgage? So there's some thinking that it's time to cut down on interest rates to give people the chance to have economic mobility, let's say, so they could afford housing and also maybe other loans for other things. Like if you need a car and you you think that having a high interest rate will prevent you from getting a car because then you can't go to a job if you don't have a car. Like there's so many economic domino effects. So that's some of what's happening lately as of toward the end of August 2024, when we're recording this podcast. And Sina, what do you think about some of this talk of lowering interest rates in the coming months? Well, as a consumer, I love it. <laughs> um, simply because, like you say, with mobility, houses don't sell. People, you know, they don't buy houses. So get kind of stuck where they are instead of potentially moving into a new position because then we would have to sell the house and right now houses aren't selling and we wouldn't be able to get as you know be able to get as much when we sell so of course there are houses that potentially still are selling but the whole mid-range of houses are just like for middle class is kind of standing still so i think it's it will be nice also you know it's something that we can see here in, in Denmark as well, even though in, in Europe we've been lowering interest rates uh, earlier as well. It's always nice. And I remember the good times a couple of years ago where interest rates were low. It was great for mortgages. You know, it was great for society. That was It was a growth society and everything. And it could be potentially, you know, what we'll see is that it's going to be great for the stock market as well. And yeah, I've heard when interest rates start going down, then the stock market would go up because often it's not always the case, but often the stock market is somewhat inverse of the bond market. So as yields are going down for bonds like U.S. Treasury bonds, then that means more people might be incentivized from the stock market because say right now, let's say you could get a 5% U.S. Treasury bond. That's kind of okay for some investors because it's not like too low, but like 5% is a nice return for not taking much risk because people typically look at bonds as like super low risk, even if they're not always truly low risk, but that's a topic for another time. But with the stock market, you normally expect on average at least seven to 10%. And the S&P 500 has been giving yields way above that, like double digit, maybe on average 15% over the last five years, which is incredible. Like those are numbers you dream about getting if you are a Warren Buffett style investor like Sina and I. And yet one of the best things people probably should have been doing in the last several years is just staying put in the stock market because you've been earning monster returns instead of like, say, getting only 5% from a bond, you could be getting 15% from the S&P 500 index fund. So not saying that you should sell all your current assets, whatever they're in and jump in an index fund. But historically, over the last five years, it's been still a better bet to stay in stocks than it has to be more conservative and not sure and I've made the mistake of having too much cash in more safer assets like 
like a money market fund. So maybe I regret it a little bit of being a little bit scared that maybe there will be a recession and the stock market crashes, but that hasn't happened yet. So technically what we should expect is if the interest rates get lowered by the Fed, that will affect the interest rates for everything. So credit card interest rates will go down and mortgage rates will go down and car loan rates will go down. All of these things are technically kind of good for consumers if like even ahead of the Fed lowering rates, some mortgage rates are even below 6% now, which is really great. Like it's much better than when it was at seven or 8%. So it's encouraging that maybe the interest rates will be low enough that it will make uh, housing payments more affordable on a monthly basis. But the flip side of that is if you're a saver like me, then you might miss out on those nice 5% returns that you didn't have to do anything and you just got a sweet 5% return on your savings high yield bank account for a while. And that was really nice. Like I, I enjoyed getting that. And now soon they're saying that if the Fed starts lowering rates, maybe as early as the September Fed meeting, like it will only lower by say probably a quarter percentage. But then, you know, you'll have more rate cuts throughout 2025. And maybe they're saying these so-called experts, you know, experts are often wrong, but the experts are saying that potentially we could have rates below 4% by the end of 2025, which would be incredible. Like, can you imagine having a maybe four or 5% mortgage rate? That is like probably more of a dream for some consumers than right now if they had to get a seven or eight percent mortgage rate so imagine that getting cut in half so we'll see what happens but just because the interest rates normally mean the stock market will go up doesn't mean that that's a done deal there could still be an economic downturn that that's not what happens and then stocks go down just like everything else it doesn't always happen but sometimes they go hand in hand of like like we've seen more recently, stock market was going up and so were bond yields, which is very unusual. It doesn't usually happen that way. Yeah. And if you're out there sitting and thinking, OK, so what should I do now? You know, where it's been communicated that interest rates are going to go down. Am I going to shuffle my stock portfolio or should I sell all my bonds and what should I do? And you shouldn't necessarily do anything. It really depends on what's going to happen. Also, you know, if interest rates aren't really going to be cut much then you know maybe bonds are still you know nice to hold on to if you can get a nice five percent yield on those bonds just you know hold on to them but potentially what could also happen is that yes you would have to change your portfolio like oftentimes when you go to a retirement consultant or a bank advisor investment advisor what they will say is oh you know we have different kinds of we have very low risk portfolios that you could invest to for your retirement or you know medium risk or high risk and oftentimes the low risk portfolios contains a lot of bonds however that's not a great investment if the interest rate gets really low like let's say down to two percent i know that could take maybe you know we don't know how long that's going to take to go down to two percent but it could take some time before we're there but still you know that's when you have to think about as interest rates get lower you need to think about is it time to swap my bonds and no longer hold on to bonds but go into the stock market instead where you know you would likely get a higher return and i don't always think that retirement consultants and investment uh, advisors are correct when they say it's a low risk portfolio if your portfolio is full of bonds that barely yield any return that's kind of high risk all of a sudden because then you're could potentially be, you know, losing money. It's at least that's how it was just four or five years ago. So that's some of the considerations that you need to have today. If you did actually go and put your money into bonds, now it might be time to, you know, think about it, at least try to think about what's my next step. You don't have to do anything yet, but just be mindful of what you're going to do. Yeah. And there's no right or wrong answer. It's what is comfortable for you, obviously. Like some people might feel comfort in locking in close to 5% treasury bonds for the near term. Like maybe you can lock in a two or five year bond at a 5% yield and great. Some people have been doing that ahead of 
whenever interest rates actually get cut. But if you're not that kind of person, maybe there are some stock market opportunities. Like we've been noticing stocks have been climbing up again lately this summer, and there could be some gems in the rough, like some stocks that I've owned that I didn't expect much of, like somehow they've generated a better than expected return. And I wasn't even thinking that much was going to happen. And yet, I don't know if it's because of interest rates maybe getting cut. Like, is it truly because the business fundamentals warrant that these companies have increased in the stock market price? Or is everybody like a rising tide lifts all boat? Is it because everybody's expecting rates to be cut that all the stocks are getting lifted for now? But there are some other things that we'll talk about in the next episode of why we are a little suspicious of the market's current trend up based on a famous investor that we both like to follow and study. So that's a little bit of a teaser for the next episode. So you'll want to tune into that. But right now, even if you've been listening to Sina and I for a little while, you'll know that we've been sharing warnings about how the stock market has just been up and up for a, lot, a while since the pandemic. And is that sustainable? Is that realistic? That are we in a new plateau where everything, all the asset values are just going to be up for the foreseeable future? Or is there going to be a reckoning? Like, is the credit cycle going to collapse and then everything reset? Like people who were struggling to make their home payments, they're going to get foreclosed on. And then we'll see a wave of like another financial crisis similar to 08, 09. And then the the people who paid too much for the houses, they're going to get wiped out. Like who knows? Like I'm not trying to fear monger, but you have to question, is it sustainable that the stock market can keep the current prices that it has right now like we've we've shared indicators with you guys of how the market is still somewhat handsomely priced but is that our new normal or could it change what do you think sina well i've i've also been surprised to see how everything just kept going up um, also because of the interest rates uh, i could definitely see also when jay powell came out and said okay we're going to lower interest rate you could see that in the optimism on the stock market that uh, the big institutions were definitely happy to see that because the prices of stocks really increased and indexes we at least uh, that was pretty easy to see the big jump after those news came out However, I, I don't know if it can continue. And you do see some of the real estate investors saying, hmm, there's something going on here. A lot of foreclosures, a lot of things that are starting to happen that reminds them of 2008, pre-2008. And, you know, when you hear something like that, I hear that all the time. Of course, you know, there's always somebody that's out saying, oh, this reminds me of back in the day and this and that and but there's still some indicators as well as you know you also mentioned that next time we're going to talk a little bit about something that uh, one of the big legends and and somebody we follow what they did and that could be indicative of something that could be happening so yeah a little bit of again a teaser for next time but so yeah watching the market closely i'm not taking too many bets these days uh, even you know potentially there could be some great offers out there but right now i'm just waiting a little bit because of that what happened recently with mr warren buffett making some move which we're going to talk about next time yeah and we'll see like obviously we can't tell the future you shouldn't necessarily listen to us as we always disclaim. We have no idea what's going to happen. So I'm not saying, yeah, like Sina said, we don't necessarily advocate for you to change or do anything differently, but it's definitely some food for thought. Like I have some cash lying around that I'm thinking, what should I do with this cash? Should I invest it? Should I put it in a high yield money market? Should I put it in bonds? Like my preference is to invest in stocks, but do I want to invest in stocks? knowing that maybe the other shoe could drop like there could be some something lurking out there that i don't know for how long this stock market can sustain the current valuations because a lot of companies and consumers aren't doing as well as the stock market makes it seem like there's been a few mm -hmm. winners 
of course, like a lot of the big tech and NVIDIA have been propping up the market. But if you really look behind that of a lot of other companies, they're not doing so great. So which is a more true measure of the economy? And then eventually what the stock market will reflect. Is it just based on these big winners that continue to take up more of the market share? So as say the Apples and Microsofts gain more market share, they make up a bigger chunk of the index and that could lull people into a false sense of everything's fine and great. Like look at the winners, they're doing great and, and my stocks are up, but that could be a false sense of security. So definitely something to pay attention to of like what will be a more true judge of the US economy and, and then on the broader basis, the world economy, like how's the world doing? Is the world continuing to be able to do trade well or not? And there's just all kinds of things that could happen that we don't know what will happen. So you just try to make the best decisions you can with the information that's available and try to not fret too much about what could happen. Yeah. It Exactly. And I can, for, for me, I did buy a little bit of stock that was on sale, you know, uh, some wonderful business that I already had invested in, but now it's on sale and I'm like, Ooh, I want some more of this. So, but besides that, I'm waiting in cash because especially now after the most recent thing that we're going to talk about next time, I'm waiting in cash, but I could be wrong. I could be just missing out on opportunities here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So more to be found out in the next episode. So today we're about done with this episode, but make sure to listen in on Tuesday where we're going to talk about what's going on right now and wh why we're so cryptic about what's happening. Till next time. If you enjoyed the show and found the content informational, we would be super grateful if you would leave us a review and follow us wherever you get your podcasts so you automatically get new episodes in your feed. We publish a new show every Tuesday. The contents of the Investing Mastermind podcast are for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. None of this is investing advice. And if you need help in your personal situation, please consult with a professional.